Awesome. So <clears throat> today we are going to really talk about how you're going to create some really interesting visuals, how you're going to engage with mid journey. And I think that is going to be the culmination for a lot of the majority of the tasks that we do between chat GPT and mid journey, you will probably be doing a lot of these tasks. And, and so uh, this is going to be a really nice, um, you know, ending to our workshop. So let's get started. So before we start, Prasad, I would like to uh, um, give the special shout out to all the people who attended the task yesterday. Um, they are Lakman, Fatima, Venus, Mohan, Astha, Ajay, Pranav, Saraswati, Achyut, Ajinkya, Rashmi. And I know that Bhaskar also attended it, <laughs> but he did not submit it. I'm not sure <laughs> what happened there, but yeah, I know that. So I'm not sure how many people. Hi, Jasmine. I too submitted. I too submitted few minutes back. Oh, okay. Yeah. So well, the deadline was 5 p.m. Yes, I know, but yes, I wanted to submit, so I did. Awesome. Go for you. Good for you, Jasmine. Yes. Chat GPT decided to make fun of me. It deleted everything. I had to restart in the entire prompts. And then correctly at six o'clock, everything was there. All my data was there. It was like nothing happened. Everything was just safely saved over there. And I'm like, thank you, Chat GPT. Thank you so much for being dumb. <laughs> So that's what happened. <laughs> so so Simran, this is like the modern equivalent of the dog ate my homework. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, the homework was actually there and this dog didn't really help me. So, <laughs> sorry. Awesome. So, good job, guys. I think, you know, this kind of shows your commitment. And even if you submitted late, it's still great because it shows your commitment and your and your mindset to kind of keep growing yourself and investing in yourself. So really good job. So uh, let's go on to the next slide. And, you know, I think it gives me great pride. Like when somebody goes out and gets a job or does something or gets promoted or gets a, you know, a praise in their office because they've done something that they've learned in these workshops and in our classes, it gives me great joy because it just tells me like, you know, this is what is working for you guys. This is the opportunity that, that you guys are taking on and kind of leveraging it for, for becoming better. So it gives me a lot of happiness. So if you've used these tools and you're kind of engaging or anything, you have good news, please tell us. We want to hear it because it makes us feel good and makes us feel like all the time that we spent in creating this presentation and doing this research is good. So, and also for the R&D team, right? It's going to make them feel good because they spent close to two months working on this. And so whatever feedback you have, if you can share it, I think it's going to make us all feel good. All right. So today, we are going to talk about creating a visually engaging and user-friendly design. All right. Let's go to the next one. And keep in mind, when I say user-friendly, I do not mean UX. Okay. We will talk a little bit more about that. But okay. How do we create visually engaging designs? Let's go to the next slide. Okay, so here's the thing that you want to do. This is what I did not have yesterday, but we've kind of put it in here. There are four things that you're going to do. Okay, the first thing is you're supervising. Second thing is you're verifying whether the information that you have is accurate or not. The third thing is you're refining. Okay, and the fourth thing, after everything is done, you're going to do something called contrarian ideation. Okay, how many of you have heard this term contrarian ideation? Anybody? Anybody want to take a guess what it is? Okay. So what you're going to do is when you're going to look at that, you know, screen or this workflow, <laughs> or whatever is generated, you will assume that whatever is there is wrong. Then you'll say, what else is out there? How else will I design it? Okay. So you will look at the different assumptions and say, let's assume. So for example, we had yesterday's workflow. Okay, the workflow was about six steps. So you could have looked at the workflow and you would have said, okay, it's got six steps in it. So assume that there was only one step. How would I design it? Okay, then you're thinking, well, this probably like, you know, you can just buy now and then go directly to the cart. That's an assumption. So it's a one step purchase, right? Um, 
Or you can assume instead of saying it is six steps, what if it is 20 steps? How would I design it? Right. And the use case might be, well, if it's going to be 20 steps, it might be that, you know, four or five friends or everybody is coming together to shop for stuff. And so we are all collecting our images, our products and putting it in a in some kind of a Pinterest kind of a board. And after we put it there, then we decide which product we want to buy. So it's not a six step process. It's a 20 step process. It's a collaborative process. Right. So you're looking at the assumptions that underlie the design or the recommendations given by the AI. And you're saying, what if these assumptions were false? Would that make a valid design case, right? And you're trying to think about ways to design it that you would not have thought that the AI would not have given you, okay? So we're going to do the exact same thing. So we're going to verify, supervise, verify, refine, and do, do some ideation today, all right? So let's go on to the next one. So how do you ideate on visuals? Now, quick question. Everybody that is on mid-journey, can you raise your hands? that you're on Discord mid-journey, just raise your hand, virtual hands. Awesome. Hello. So I need a buddy who can share Join their screen. I need a buddy who can share their screen while they're doing the first task. Is there anybody that will be willing to share their screen? Fatima, you want to share your screen? No. Okay. Simran, you want to share your screen? <laughs> no? Yes? Yes. Okay. Sorry, Prasad, but my system is not working as fast, so it won't be updated. Okay. So it's kind of boring if we are sharing our screen and doing the command, right? So the first one is going to be a challenge for you guys. So anybody want to share your screen? That is my question. With uh, anybody that's got like the um, mid-journey integrated into their Discord and then want to share their screen. Okay. Simran is going for it. Should I go share for it? it. Journey? Yeah. So give me one second. Let's go to the next slide. Let's give the competition, the challenge. Okay. So here it is. So Simran, get your stuff ready. When I ask you to share, you can share. So the goals, right? So when you're doing a visual ideation, there are four different steps that you're looking at. Okay. The first is choosing the colors, choosing the typography. What is the strategy for my layouts? What are my final screens? And by the way, all of the screens that you see here are generated by Midjourney. Okay. So in, in this whole presentation, it's all Midjourney here. Midjourney and maybe Lexica or a couple of other tools, but these are all AI generated. So you're going to look at choosing your colors. You'll choose what kind of fonts to do. You will look at how you're going to do your page layout and you will do your final screens. Okay, so this is what your final screens are. This is the, the final end of the ideation stage, and then you are going to take those and you're going to work on them further. Okay, so let's go to the next slide. So imagine, okay, for an e-commerce site, you're asked to make a product details page visually engaging. Okay, so you have to create the product de details page and make it visually engaging. And you are basically asked to ideate on that. So how would you automate it without compromising on quality? So what tools would you use? Anybody? So Blue Willow, Bhaskar's got Blue Willow. Yeah, I got Blue Willow too. That works pretty well. Okay. Simple. There are two, two parts of the problem. One is how do I create my prompt? And the second is, how do I visualize it? The prompt goes to chat GPT. The visualization goes to mid journey. Okay. It's a very simple, straightforward game. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So here's the game that we have. So you have through ideation with chat GPT yesterday, we had come up with all of this information, right? What are my colors? What is my type of typography? What is my content? What are my graphical elements? You've got all of these. Okay. Now let's go to the next slide. Okay. Then you're going to be visualized through mid journey. Let's go to the next slide. Okay. So in order to use mid journey, let's actually look at do a quick discussion on mid journey. Let's go to the next one, please. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do is you're going to hit slash imagine. Okay. That is the initial command. As soon as you hit slash imagine, you will see a little black box showing up. It says prompt. Okay. And then you're going to type in your prompt there. Okay. This is the simplest way that you start working with mid journey. 
Okay. Any questions or thoughts here? Just write this down. Backslash, imagine, and then you see the box and then you type in your command there. Okay. Now let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Now, when mid journey generates images, it will generate combination mid journey or blue willow. I think both of them do the same thing. They will generate combinations of four pictures. Right. So when you shade the four pictures, you will see underneath there are about nine buttons. Okay. So U1, U2, U3, and then V1, V2, V3. So what you're doing is U means upscale. Okay. Upscale means take one image and make it much more higher resolution. Okay. So in this case, when somebody pressed U1, the third image is the one that was upscale. You got one single image that was in a higher resolution. Okay. In the second one, when you say V1, that means it say, okay, take, I like version one, but I want variations of version one. So you took that first, the version, you know, you took the first image and created multiple variations of that. Okay. So that is, what is the difference? V means variations. U means upscale. I think V is probably version or variation. I don't know exactly what the terminology is. That's what it is. Okay. So any questions at this point? Awesome. Let's go on to the next one. And one of the things I will tell you is if you are thinking about buying, you know, uh, uh, you know, chat GPT and all that stuff, I would say hold off for about, you know, 15, 20 days, because I know for sure that there are going to be some really interesting tools that are going to be coming into the market. And you should basically try those, right? So that's what I would say. So if you're looking in there, just wait for 15 days and then, you know, let's see what's out of the market. But in the meantime, right? This is the next step that you're going to do. V minus minus V is version. So what happens is as mid journey evolves, it creates multiple versions of itself. Okay. So there are multiple versions and V3 is the earlier version. V5 is the current version. Okay. And you can see the quality difference of for images, right? So it's like images are actually pretty decent across the board, right? It's like, you know, when you look at V5, V5 is a little bit better at understanding colors and how the, the subject should be light, the lighting and all that stuff. It's a little bit better at that. But otherwise, you know, V3 and V5 give general images. If you're asking for general images, they're comparable in nature. Okay. However, let's go to the next slide. Right. This is where the interesting component comes in. Okay. When you say stylize, okay. Stylize means how randomly should you think? Because all of these AI tools are trained on images, right? They just literally take a bunch of images and train on them. Okay. So ultimately the final output you will get is a combination of all the images that these AI tools have seen. So when you give a low number, that means make sure that it is less it is not experimenting too much. If you give a high number, that means experiment as much as you want. Okay. So that is what it is. Stylizes minus minus S. It's a lowercase. Everything is lowercase. Don't use capitalization. Okay. Because this is a case sensitive tool. So when you do minus minus S hundred, that means don't be too experimental. Whereas when you say minus minus 20,000, you're saying it's going to be really experimental. Right. And you can see that as part of the curves and all that. So it's like, you know, the, the more experimental one is like more curvy. It's got some more interesting uh, visual elements in there that you do not see on the hundred side. Okay. So this is the third command minus minus V minus minus S. So these are the things that you need to understand. Let's go on to the next one. Now, this is something I want you to be aware of. You did it's not going to significantly change everything, but Understand that there are about four versions that have been in play. So there's been a test version. There's version three, version four, version five. Okay. One and two are like whatever Niji and uh, test. So those are the one and two. So it's like version three is the actual production versions. Okay. So now when you're looking at the stylized default, if you do not give a stylized command, the basic default is a hundred. So it is like, okay, do some randomness. Don't do too much. Right. But the range, when you look at it for each version, the ranges are different. Okay. So one of the interesting things that I will say is if you're trying to generate just general images, version three is pretty good. Okay. However, if you're trying to create UI screens, 
it's version 4 and version 5 that are better at it you version 3 does not do good ui screens it has not been trained on screens as as much as as or at least it doesn't have that much data at least that's how i'm thinking about it so when you are want to create screens you want to go for version 4 and version 5 when you want to create like little icons and stuff like that version 3 4 5 all of these are fine for you okay and the numbers the ranges that you have are 0 to 1000 for version 4 and 5 and for version 3 to 625 to 60000 okay so my argument is completely ignore version 3 right for those of you that are technically oriented you may try these guys but if you are not forget version 3 i would just go for version 5 you know and you go within a stylized range of 0 to 1000 that's all you need to know okay any questions thoughts comments here Okay, cool. Let's go on to the next one. Okay, now this is where Simran is going to be doing his demo. Okay, Prasad. and this is the image that you have to create in mid journey. Prasad, what is NIJI in the previous slide that you that was a version? Okay, okay, right. So that was probably, I'm assuming that was an internal version, and the test version was probably some kind of a limited beta, is what I'm assuming. I am not sure. Okay, so Simran, remember this dog. This is what you have to create. All right, go for it. Go ahead, share your screen. So yes. Simran, you want to talk about uh, what you when you shared this at work, uh, what the discussion oh, yeah. was? So firstly, I'd like to thank the R and D people and everyone else because today at work over lunch, um, we started discussing about. Uh, people being lazy with AI and blah, blah, blah. And I said, guys, I think that's a little too far stretched. And um, they were like, what do you mean? So then I um, I was doing my assignment, right? The homework task. So I showed them, like I gave that prompt about how this, I'm a UX designer, imagine I'm your UX designer, et cetera, et cetera. And I showed them how carefully crafted this prompt has to be in order that the results match. So once they saw that they were able to understand, like a few few of my colleagues were able to understand how much of effort goes into even creating a prompt. And then once they I create a prompt, then they were able to see how useful and how how much potential this particular thing has with chat GPT and stuff. So then I started telling everyone about the prompt. And I think two of them are probably watching this on YouTube if you are live. And I okay. told them that uh, yesterday's session, we discussed about... Uh, prompts and stuff so i share it with a marketer and two product managers and the product managers take care of the uh the workflows and wireframes part of stuff and then they send it to to us to, for visualization so i shared right. that and that was pretty insightful and uh i got i mean they, everyone is really um appreciative of this and i said hey this is all my design community who you know came up with this thing and stuff uh, and i shared the the youtube link as well so i was want to say thanks uh, to everyone who put this on. Awesome. Out. Yeah, I mean, it's like, uh, yeah, the R&D team did a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what it is. So, awesome. So, so let's share your screen. And... Uh, only mid-journey, Prasad? Yeah, only mid-journey. So we'll start with mid-journey because that's a dog I want. <laughs> okay. So I'm on mid-journey. Okay. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. So delete everything and let's start from zero. Okay. So the first thing that you're doing is delete everything. No, I, I've delete come to imagine it. command also. I just type that out before. Yeah, yeah. delete it, delete everything. Okay. okay. The first thing that happens is when you add mid journey to your discord, you will see a little icon on the top right hand corner. If you could do your mice over on top of the mid journey icon, it looks like a little sailboat. Okay. On the top left hand corner. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. See, that is mid journey. Okay. You click on that. Okay, okay, I'll come from college to mid-journey, so here's where yeah. I am. Yeah, so when you click on that, you will see mid-journey, okay? Under mid-journey, you will see something called newcomer rooms. Select one of the newcomer rooms. Doesn't matter which newcomer room. Select 137, just for, you know, uh, example. All right. Now you're selected 137, and this is where you are uh, going to enter your command. So go ahead and enter our command. So first, Simran, let's talk about the command. What is the command that you're looking at? What I, are you thinking? What are you imagining? So the prompt has to be very specific. And huh. I want to ask them to create that dog 
with the background and uh, stuff and then i have to enter the hyphen hyphen s or hyphen hyphen b that part i am still not able to understand okay you don't have to do the hyphen hyphen because it's a general image okay okay, okay. and if you don't do hyphen hyphen then the <laughs> default version kind of takes over you don't have to worry about it cool okay so all right so what what do you think was in the background what did you notice in that image there was a dog what else did you notice it looked like it was in a rainforest or some some natural outdoors scene okay my memory serves huh so so it was outdoors yeah and then sunny yeah okay so it was sunny outdoors and it was in the in the in the, in the day so yeah sunny was there uh, outdoors and the dog uh, was the main uh, focus so it was in the frame it took a lot of uh, the real estate of the frame got it so the close so let, the let's type that in let's see how that works out the moment you say imagine and then hit tab there you go you got the prompt now let's type in type in i i mean i get full control or is there a prompt yeah, you I'm get full control, control man you are the boss i'm just your uh, co backseat driver so create an image of a dog sitting Uh, okay good if anybody else has any command ideas type it in so we can try them is it good enough i would say let's get rid of that right so because you have already stating the dog sitting in a rainforest let's see how that plays out i'm just very curious okay let's see okay where is that going it went up there you go no 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 you went you crossed it go down go down a little bit more let's see it's there scroll up uh it, it will be highlighted it will be scroll up there you go there okay. you go that's yours hey man so simran you can create a server of yourself and add this bot into your server it would it would you would have only your results there you don't have do to scroll this how do i do that just create add server yeah awesome okay create my own anything okay uh, for me okay. and my friends first one would work yes create it <laughs> now go to mid journey wait no, just escape go to no, mid journey okay on the right top you have uh, the bot i guess somewhere click on mid journey i think you haven't clicked it i am in mid journey okay open the contact list uh, yeah i'm not seeing the contact list or uh, just below the search oh sorry i mean just beside the search yeah member number yeah yeah okay yeah now on the right top you have uh, the bot i guess you should have one second Loading. While it's loading, yeah, okay. on that, oh, yeah. yeah. Click, click on it. Add to server, and then select your server from the list. Yeah, authorize it. Awesome! I love this. Everybody is already experimented with this. This is great. Now, T-shirt, very convenient. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Now it's added to your thing. You can do your prompts in your. You can go back to your thing. Yeah. Here so you can directly right. start with imagine prompt. Awesome. Okay. okay. So last time the thing was that the dogs we got was the breeds were very random. Yeah. Okay. Shabnam wrote a prompt in the in the chat. Can you copy and paste that? Create an image of a happy. No, not that's Yasmin. Uh. Location. in the grass and sitting so ajay said in the grass and sitting so white spotted black and brown dog 
with a ball sitting in the grass yeah. on a rainy day. High definition, fine details. I think that you can copy it from the car, from right. the chat. Let's see. This is so much fun, man. I'm loving this. And I would say if you guys are around, you guys can also search and try this. Try experimenting with it. See what comes out. And then if you see a command that works out really well, then there you go. So I like that one. The version three seems to be the closest to it. Right? Yeah. Okay. So the only thing is the grass is not there. So open it up. Let's see. Let's look at it in a big. Uh, yeah. So I like the version three, but we need more grass. Isn't it? Yeah. So should I say, give me more grass? Yeah. So let's put the same command with grass. So. Yeah. Um. And then a ball sitting on fine grass. Fine grass. Sitting on fine grass on a rainy day. So, guys, can you tell me what breed of dog it is? Maybe it's a perm. It's a. It looks like a um, Belgian uh, Malamute or something like that. Can, can anybody that's a dog lover? Okay, can you tell me what kind of dog that was? It's a Dalmatian. It's, a, it's not a Dalmatian. The one that we had was not a Dalmatian. So Dalmatian has spots, black and white spots. So, okay, white spotted black and brown dog with a ball sitting on a fine grass on a sunny day. Let's say sunny day because it's like a little bit too dull. Let's say sunny day. Cloudy day would be better? No, because it was a sunny kind of a picture, right? So let's okay. let's try sunny day. Now let's let's hit enter. Let's see what happens. I think the dog breed is border collie. Okay, that could be border collie. Okay, I could probably go with that. Prasad, is there a way of asking it to enhance the existing image that I have already shared? Yeah, so you can say upscale. You can say upscale U, U3. Do U3, it will upscale that. Okay, let this... Uh... You can always give multiple commands, that's fine. Okay. So U3, click the U3. U3. Okay. Yeah, click on that. And then hit the refresh button. I believe that's what... Okay, it's already done. It started. So when you upscale it, that one specific image that you select kind of becomes bigger. Okay. For those of you that are observing, please do the same thing. Create your own server, add the mid journey bot, and then you get ready for it. Because after this, we are going to start generating screens. St. Bernard is might be might be a one a tibetan mastiff might be another one so try the same command with the saint bernard and instead of white spotted black and brown dog get rid of that saint bernard with a dog Get rid of the dog with hey, the ball. What if it actually brings me a Saint Bernard then? Yeah, that's okay. Saint Bernard, you want a Saint Bernard, right? Oh, okay, okay, okay. Like There's saint. ambiguity. There's a Saint, yeah. Yeah, go ahead, enter this. Let's see. Dog breed. Okay, let's let's look at the upscaled one. Yeah, click on that. And these are like really good. Yeah. So okay. let's go back. Let's see if it's created your image, the Saint Bernard. It's creating that.
There you go. I think version three is the closest to what we were looking for, isn't it? Yeah. Up upscale version three, and we've got it. You can also give me versions of version three. So type in V three, and you'll get four more examples based on the third one. Yeah, what even for Discord, the credits are limited, Achyut. So okay, since I have this image there, should I do what you're saying over here? What do you want to do? Like uh, tweak it and make it and enhance it a little better, as you said. You can enhance it, but now I think you know we all have limited number of credits. I don't want to use all your credits on, you know, Saint Bernard. We want to create some screens and wireframes as well. So this is a good good point. Okay. So there you go. Baskar is like a whole new level. So border collie dog sitting in a green grass with a ball in its mouth on a very sunny day. Realistic, fine detail, scenery, sunlight, ultra wide angle, brown color. And this guy's totally used all the commands that are available. So you know that Baskar has memorized the the, the yeah. standard yeah. prompt. Type this yeah. out. See this in. This is it. Baska. Do you have it? Do you want to share your screen? Because I don't want Simran to lose all his uh, all his points. Yeah, I have it there. Okay. So while this is running, okay, let, okay. let this come to. There it's you go. Very close. Uh, yeah. Okay. There you go. So you can always at this point you can do your variations. You can upscale. You can uh, you know you can redo this stuff. You can basically look at it in the web. You can you can play with a lot of these kind of things. The other thing that you can also do is you can take an image that you like and say, give me an image like this, but with this description. And then it will also Mid Journey will try to create an image similar to what you've uploaded. Okay. So all right, cool. So thank you, Simran. So I'm looking for at least three or four volunteers who will do this while we are talking. Okay. So you guys decide who all want to volunteer and raise your hand so that I can kind of work with you to create all these commands. And you guys, for the rest of you that are not volunteering, you can practice it on your own. Okay. So go ahead, Bhaskar, share your screen. Thanks, Simran. You have something to add? No, I was wondering if I should stop sharing, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much, Simran. So I want some more volunteers, guys. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> I've done spider the, the fisherman who wears a Spider-Man costume while fishing. This is awesome. So there you go. Let's let's click on that. Let's see. So you are okay. So you are using the prompt set for uh, Blue Willow. Yes. Awesome. Cool. And again, Blue Willow is another AI that, that kind of does this. So this is awesome. Cool. I have so, added it both, both to my server because I, I already ended up my mid journey. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say hang in there for 15 days. I think we will have some really interesting announcements that are coming through so we can uh, do that. But anyways, that's great. So can we go back to the presentation? Thanks. Uh, thanks, Bhaskar. And so what I want you guys to do is the only thing you want to do is you want to think about the commands. Okay. Let's play with the commands. Okay. Let's go to the next one. Okay. So understand what AI is good for, what it is not good for. Okay. It cannot generate content. It will not generate content. If you look at the content, there is nothing in there. Even if you give it the content, it's not going to read it. Okay, so do not put too much content because the AI is likely to get confused about it. Going to read the content and think it's instructions for the AI. Okay, do not give content. Number one, number two, typography. No point describing the typography because this version, the version five and version four, do not understand typography. So don't even bother about it. What it cannot generate is UX. Okay. What it is doing is it generating visually interesting screens or visually interesting images, but it is not doing the UX. Will a tab work or not? It doesn't know, right? Is that module related to user intention or not? It does not know. So it will not do the UX. So you're simply getting layouts, colors, and uh, you know visuals, right? So that's all you're looking at. So you're generating colors, features uh, based on a philosophy with a layout and a placement. That's all it is doing. Okay. Any questions or thoughts at this point? 
So make sure that when you're doing your prompt, do not include prompt, uh, do not include content, typography, as well as UX elements, because UX is your responsibility. All right. Okay. Let's go on to the next slide. Okay. Now we're going to visualize through mid journey. So what we are going to do is we're going to run some commands. Okay. And while we're doing these commands, I want you for your homework. Okay. Look at your homework, the prompt that you generated, and then do the exact same exercise because when you're sharing, you can probably put in these commands or, or somebody can recommend it to you, but practice with this. Okay. So if you can zoom in a little bit, Rajiv, so we can see the command in a little bit more detail. One more zoom in, please. Okay. So what we're going to do is this is the command prompt that chat GPT has generated. Okay. And what we are going to take is we are going to do sentence by sentence. We're going to say, what do we want to keep? What do we want to reject from our command set? Okay. So I want to design a product details page for headphones that caters to casual and power shoppers. Should we retain this or re remove it? Just keep typing, keep or remove. Just type. First sentence. I want to design a product, only the first sentence, keep or remove. Keep, all right, let's keep it. Okay, the goal of this page to help users make informed purchase decisions by providing detailed information and clear call to actions. Keep or remove. Yeah, remove. The reason is because it's not going to add anything, right? It, it's not doing the UX for you, okay? If somebody understood UX and you say, okay, I want to provide detailed information, then it makes sense. Here it does not, okay? The finalized recommendation would use maroon and primary color, mustard yellow as the secondary color. Keep or remove? Keep, yeah, because colors, that's what it deals with. So let's keep colors. So let's keep it in there. Okay, now Open Sans, Later Bold, 20, 28 Pixels, Montserrat, Open Sans for descriptions. Keep or remove? Remove. Awesome. So Shabnam, uh, the reason why we say remove is because this uh, bit journey does not do fonts really well. So there's no point in keeping it there. Okay, all right. The graphic element for product images section should be high quality product photos with zoom and pan function. So should we keep or remove? Okay, keep. Yes. So you're talking about, okay, so you want a high pro quality product images. Okay. With zoom and pan, I don't know whether that will work or not. So let's try it. Okay. And a section layout should be two column layout with product image on the left and description on the right. Should we keep or remove? Keep. All right. Let's keep it. Okay. Now in addition, we've got an Excel sheet where we say, what is it that we want to add in addition to this? Okay. So we want to say features. So let's go to the chat GPT that you had generated and see what features that it told us yesterday. Okay. So it says image carousal. Yes, we want an image carousal. Okay. We want to keep that. Let's zoom in pan. It's not a feature, right? I mean, it's a it's a feature, but it's not a macro level uh, design pattern, right? So we're not going to worry about it. Let's scroll down. Image gallery, yes. So let's say we can. it can have an image gallery. Then typography is useless. Color is useless. Let's scroll down. Star rating, right? You want star rating and user reviews. Okay. These are the things you want. Star rating, user reviews, and image gallery. Let's go back. Let's go back. Star rating, before we forget, I can only remember three things at a time. Star rating, user reviews. And what was the image gallery? Just a gallery because image gallery can be like anything, right? So uh, a carousal is also a gallery in some ways. G A L L gallery. Yeah, get rid of the L. Yeah. Okay. So now what is we've got the features. We've got the lay layout and placement because it's a two column and all that we talked about it. What is our philosophy for designing the product page? What kind of a philosophy do we want? Should we say fun? Should we say minimalistic? Should we say exciting? What should we say? Anybody have any ideas? Exciting. Okay, let's go put it in there. 
exciting and realistic. Let's say realistic. Okay, good. So that's the theme. Let's go back. Let's see what else we want. So colors. So we've got the colors. So let's copy and paste the colors down below as well. So what were the colors we said? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. So maroon and mustard yellow. Maroon comma mustard yellow. Just type it in. That's fine. Okay, so we got the colors. What else do we want? AI specific commands. Okay, now this is one of the things. Go back and say, what are AI specific commands? AI specific commands are, you have to say it's UI comma UX. So it knows you have to generate UI UX. Comma. Then you're going to put version minus minus V5. We'll try V5. So the problem here is the minus minus it's converting into a different format. So you may want to just, uh, we will edit it when we put it into the command. Don't worry. So comma minus minus uh, S. Uh, what do you say? I would like to have a 700. I like it more experimental. Okay. Between S and 700, can we put a space? And the V and five, we can, we can put a space. Yeah. Okay. Now, what else do we want? Are there any other commands that we want? Anything else? Oh, by the way, star rating, we also want menu navigation items on the top. So we want a top navigation bar, right? Navigation bar on the top. Then we want a search box below the navigation bar. Then we want filters on the right hand side, on the sorry, on the left hand side. Okay, so this is what we have. Okay, so let's actually run a command. So for those of you that are demoing, use your own problem statement to create your own com your own command using this framework. Okay, so who's going to be presenting? Is it Achut? You're going to be presenting your screen. Is that right? Just do thumbs up if you're going to present. Okay, so somebody else, if somebody else is ready with their prompt, they can uh, they can uh, copy and paste it. So we can experiment with it. So if you if somebody else is ready, put your uh, put your prompt in the statement. So let's copy and paste all of this and put it into our mid journey. Okay, now we are going to, let's get rid of maroon as the primary color and then let's get the final recommendations include, get rid of that. Yeah, because anyways, the colors are down below. The graphic visual elements include, right? So include, I think we should put star rating, image navigation, we put that. Include navigation bar on top. Search search and navigation filters on the left, uh, search below the navigation filters on the left hand side. And then put star rating, image reviews, all that. Let's put all of the other free features there. So what I'm doing is I'm just making it readable. So, you know, you can read it and you can verify and this is what I want. I mean, you can give as far as the AI system is concerned, you can put in any order. It will not make a difference. But for you to make it readable and editable, I'm putting it this way. Okay, then leave that statement. Let that be there. That's fine. Get rid of the star rating image reviews because that is duplicating. 
No, no, not there. Below the second line. Yeah. No, why are you deleting all that? Control Z, please. Okay. Only the star rating and left hand side. Yeah. Okay. Now let's uh, remove the new lines and all that. Yeah. And then after that, exciting, comma, realistic. So get rid of and in the middle and then just say comma. Comma. Yeah. Just put commas. So this is one of the things when you put something as commas, the system will still read it as, you know, these are all the different uh, things that I need to take into consideration when I'm designing. So these are like system tags in some ways. Okay, now let's generate this. Go ahead, Simran. You uh, have something to add? Uh, shouldn't you mention the style of what we want to go? Because usually when I've tried these, they've given uh, three-dimensional UIs and stuff like that. So say flat UI or something like that. Or I mean, yeah, I mean, you can do that. But so far, I have not received three-dimensional screens. Now, if there's a new version that does it, I would definitely want to do it. No, in the sense like the buttons are very um, button like 3D like. You can do that. I think that makes sense. But why make it so specific? Maybe what it's giving is going to be interesting. The whole intention of this is to ID it. Okay. Right. So I don't want to get too detailed into, you know, uh, being very specific right now. We're just ideating at a high level. Sure, go ahead. All right. Granthi, you have to create your own prompt. That's the homework. So you're doing it while we are talking. So you, you create, remember you created your problem statement. For your problem statement, create your prompt here. Okay, go ahead and hit enter. Let's see. There you go. You have some really interesting kind of screens, right? Now, the problem is only one of those guys had uh, the menu on top. None of them put the search box uh, and none of them have filters on the left hand side, right? Well, that's okay. You know, you still have a version, you have a variation that you can play around with, right? And now you can do additional research on this. Okay. Now, if you want to say, okay, what, how should I organize all of my uh, content? How should I organize, prioritize my uh, information or whatever? You know, you can probably go back to chat GPT, which module is more important, less important. Again, you do a contrary ideation. Is this likely to be false? What are the other use cases? And then you think through it. Okay. Everybody on the same page, guys? Awesome. So now who is ready with their prompt? Just raise their hand. So you can always, Jasmine, you said, should we define desktop or mobile for some screen orientation? Absolutely, right? You can always choose which one you want. So what, can you enter another command, Rajiv? Just copy and paste the same command from before. And then instead of that, put comma, after UX, put comma mobile. Okay, let's see if that works. Or if this does not work, you will have to give it some screen uh, aspect uh, limitations. You said this is the aspect limitation I want you to give, and that's what it, it's going to do. Okay. Okay. So looks like it hasn't understood it. 
So, oh, by the way, because we gave it two column layout, right? So give it a one column layout, because if you, especially if you're doing mobile, you need a single column layout. Ooh, it actually did a little bit better now. It actually gave the menu items on the top and all that version one was interesting. Okay, so go ahead and type it in. Copy, you just copy the, paste the prompt and then get rid of the two column requirement. And then get rid of that saying filters on the left. So uh, search filters. Just uh, yeah, delete that statement and instead of filters, say search filters. No, no. After navigation, say search filters. And get rid of left-hand side. On the left-hand side, get rid of that. Because that is what is basically expected. So let's see if it works now. And again, Yasmin, we have not tried it for mobile devices, but this is a good use case. If that doesn't work, we have to specify it with an aspect ratio. Yeah. So I think you would probably need to give an aspect ratio and see how it plays out. Okay. All right. So this is where we are. So this is how you are able to generate a lot of screens. Now get rid of the maroon and mustard yellow and see what happens. So let it ideate on its own. Let, let it come up with some recommendations by itself. And then get rid of exciting and realistic as well. And then say uh, simple, type in simple. Okay, now go ahead and hit enter. All right. So I want people who are ready with their prompts, guys. Anybody ready with their prompt that they want to experiment with? Oh, wow. This guy has a search box. Can you go to version two? Click on, uh, zoom in a little bit. Yeah. So there is a search box that's been implemented here. So interesting. Yep. So there you go. So you have so many variations that you can now play around with, experiment with, and see. And then this is where now you're going to apply your thought process as a UX designer, well, what works, what doesn't work, right? So if you zoom in, you would say, yep, we need to have a search box, but we need to have a navigation. Clearly, none of the designs have given you the perfect answer, right? But what you have got is a bunch of different layouts. In some, you have images on the right-hand side. In some, you have images on the left-hand side. You have uh, information details. You have thumbnails on top. So you have a lot of different versions. And so what you're doing, this is exactly like a fashion, fashion show, right? So the clothes that you see in the fashion show are never practical. However, what designers are doing is they're looking at some of the most interesting elements in the clothes and they're pulling this out and making practical designs out of them. Okay. So the idea here is none of these designs would be practical, but you're picking and choosing what you want. And then you're creating your own screen. Okay. Cool. So any questions or thoughts at this point? 
and you would do the same thing with screens instead of saying in you know, a high definition screens if you wanted to wireframes you will type in wireframes the same way give me wireframes for this and so that's how you'd get wireframes low fidelity work okay cool any questions or thoughts all right any one want to do a demo in the absence of anybody i'm going to just uh, pick random people then or not not so random people people i know are probably ready simran are you ready no bhaskar are you ready okay why don't you share your screen and show us a way of doing this i have already done something so i have created a prompt using the same thing like restaurant details page the okay. first thing was this result okay can you show us the prompt first it will yeah. be worthwhile okay so so i added similar elements as the prompt that is there okay and then instead of maroon i changed it to deep red but uh -huh. after few variations i have done it like with minimalism and glass morphism and this was mm -hmm. the result of it okay cool awesome so for me version 1 is actually going to make it happen it's actually as close to reality as possible at least that's what it looks like for me <laughs> right awesome um, so anybody done anything else guys yeah so all these tools are limited in usage so what we are basically trying to do is get get some of these tools where we can get unlimited usage and so we are basically working with uh, experimenting on how to get some unlimited usage out of these tools but we will let you know that's what i'm saying like stay tuned for the another 15 days and by the way you know you will have i don't know do we have a sign up sheet rajiv for anybody that's interested in ai tools yeah we'll be sharing it on uh, college members whatsapp group and uh, on free registration whatsapp group okay so we will share a, a list a mailing list so as soon as we know of new tools that are coming in you know and any new announcements we will share it in that group so if you want to sign up for it keep an eye in the whatsapp group and then sign up for that make sure you have your information there okay so all right so pranit you say there is an unlimited way there is a way to generate unlimited images can you share that is that legal uh, first i don't know about the legal thing but uh, yeah i actually use it quite a lot matlab uh, it's not uh, something like uh, it's not any other resource it's basically using uh, mid journey options only oh and i'm in the discord and the mid journey options so okay yeah okay so share it share it with us offline yeah. uh let's look at it and say if it's, as long as it's legal and kosher we will share it with everybody else yeah yeah okay sure yeah cool thanks prani okay. awesome guys so i think that about does it so if there's anything else to present let's go back awesome so this is some of the versions that we played around with okay so where we've experimented with colors we've experimented with different layouts we've experimented with the philosophy itself you know uh, what was the last one the philosophy what was the third philosophy so uh, while we were asking for uh, detailed uh, information on previous prompts so we have asked for uh, minimalized and make uh, making sure that it's easily consumable mm -hmm. So that and that's what the third philosophy is is that what it is yes okay got it and then the other layouts were you basically what were the commands that you gave for the experiment experimenting with layouts so i gave with the complete freedom i wanted it to come up with layouts okay all right so you did not define a layout you allowed it to basically come up with layouts and then the colors i asked it to choose colors got it answer. okay good So how's everybody feeling right now? Yeah, go ahead, Jasmine. So I realized one thing that um, AI is actually helping me with recognition rather than recall, uh, mm -hmm. especially with your UI patterns and your 
uh, your fonts and the match of the colors and everything when it goes together, how it would look if I do like this. So instead of me imagining and not be able to imagine, it's giving me uh, upfront so that I can easily recognize and select my outputs. Right, exactly. And so what it is doing here for you is you know, a lot of what, what stops us from ideating a lot is the cost of implementation. Yes. Right. So if I have to spend eight hours implementing a screen and doing all that, then I'm not going to be experimenting as much. Whereas here you're implementing it. You're, you're thinking about it, implementing in 30 seconds and you're evaluating it. You're doing it again. Yes. Right? That is the power. So that's why I say AI is great for ideation. Imagine this AI is your direct report. It is reporting to you and you're starting your job with it. Yeah. Right. So technically, every designer should have two direct reports. Right. So you need to have the chat GPT and the image generating AI working together and you are basically ideating with them and getting 90% of your ideation done there. Right. Awesome. Great point, Jasmine. Thank you. Uh, any other questions, guys? Okay, so there is from YouTube. It says, if MidJourney and ChatGPT can help us in the UX part, then, uh, okay, so this is the old question, right? So it's like, if MidJourney and ChatGPT can help us in the UX part, then why small, medium-scale companies will hire UX, UI? The point is, it will not, right? You're not replacing. So the idea is that you are using it as a partner to ideate, okay? So even if you look at these screens, none of these screens are workable, right? But you are able to see how the layout and the text and the, and the visuals kind of work out. And then you are able to choose which one you want. So ultimately it is a designer that still has to make that decision on the ground. Okay, even if it's chat GPT, chat GPT gives a lot of bad data as well. So it's you as a designer have to look at it and say, what is the good data that I'm going to take? And then what is the stuff I'm going to ignore? So the point is UI jobs and UX jobs, are there in risk? Not really, right? But however, what is at risk is people who are not thinking. Those are the guys that are at risk. If you are doing your UX and you're thinking about what you're doing, your job is always there. It is guaranteed. Okay. If you want to do your job without thinking, your job is replaced. And it's not replaced by an AI, it is replaced by a person who's thinking. Okay, cool. Any other questions and thoughts, guys? So, Achyut, it's a what's the concept, contribution of UX domain in the ethical usage of AI? Now, I think there's an ideal version and there's a non-ideal version, right? So the ideal version is, yeah, you know, UX is basically helping us define the ethics of things and doing all that stuff and then kind of managing it, right? So that's a more, uh, you know, I'm going to be protecting you to kind of make sure that you're going to be safe all the time. The other version is there's a new technology that let's jump into the water, see what happens. If we drown, we'll figure out ways not to drown. Right? But one or two people will die anyways. That's the assumption. Right? So the reality of technology is always this. right? And this is also, you see that as part of strategies run by countries itself. If you look at the US economy, the way they do it is a new technology come, nobody's controlling it. Right? They just explode. Right? Do whatever you want. Then we will see the problem and we'll create laws around it. Right? Whereas when you look at certain other countries, you know, including India, right? What we try to do is, okay, everything is banned until we approve it, right? And so the consequence result is what on one side, it is approved until we say no. And in certain other countries, it is banned until we say yes. And so you can see the difference in technology, right? In one country, the technology evolves so quickly. In the other one, you know, you're always following the other country. You don't have a choice what you're going to do. And so that is a huge legal and legislative issues that kind of come into play. So the, again, the argument is, yeah, you know, there are ethical aspects, which is what designers as well as individual other, other disciplines will also look at it and contribute to it. But it is based on when we start things, you know, starting to not work out or something is going wrong. That's what happened because you cannot predict. You take a new technology and you launch it. You don't know how it's going to influence you. Right. I mean, even if you think about it, chat GPT, a bunch of universities say we are banning chat GPT. Okay. 
But my argument is what, and there's some universities, one or two universities that are saying, no, we are going to work with chat GPT, right? So you can see the difference, right? But my argument is if you're going into workforce and you are not being trained on AI, then how are you going to be a productive member of the workforce? So I think the argument is always like, you know, yes, it's I'm all for it to be an ethical usage kind of a component, but at the end of the day, we all have to be accountable for it and we have to evolve. It's going to be an evolving situation. Cool. So any other questions, guys? Okay, let's go to the next slide. So again, if you like learning and you really want to work within a, within a group and you want to set it up, this is for all those people in uh, on YouTube. You know, uh, please do join this group. Uh, you know, uh, you you get to work with a bunch of really smart people who are all part of the members. You get to share ideas, come up with new ways of thinking stuff. You get to do these work workshops. You get to do meetups and all of this and more. And again, the price keeps increasing, partly because the real value of the program is somewhere close to about 6,000 rupees. But you know, for now it is about two thousand nine hundred ninety. So please do sign up if you uh, if you are interested and you are excited about learning. So let's go on to the next slide. Awesome. So quick su survey. So to help us build a stronger community for all of us, you know, please take this survey. So if you can take about five minutes, it's a very short survey. So if you can copy and paste this URL down below, that'd be great for everybody as well. Yeah, you know, Akash is like banning calculators. That's right. You know, I mean, what's the point of banning calculators? So take this survey, tell us exactly. And, you know, we'd love to know what other uh, programs you want in the future, what other aspects you want us to discuss, because that's also going to help us define the content and kind of do research and build out those aspects. This is your chance to tell us what works, what doesn't work. And then when you're done, just type in done, and then we can get on the next slide. And then you'll have the third day's challenge. And then all the people that complete all three days, days challenge, get your certificate, earn your certificate. All right, how many people are done? Just type in done or just say yes as in the icons in your reaction. Okay, Lukman is done. Mukesh is done. Awesome. And one other thing I want to remind is I want you to try this. People who need help next Friday, our R&D team is going to be available for you. So they will help you kind of work with whatever you have doubts. So make sure you're practicing it. And then next Friday in our, as part of our feedback Friday, the R&D team will run a session for you. So you can practice it again. If you have any doubts, they'll also clear it for you. Awesome. Give me five more duns and then we can get going.
So Pranav is asking, can we have the session on Saturday instead of Friday? The challenge always is, it's all about people's availability, right? The question is, what, where are the maximum number of people available as well as where are, when is, are the R&D team available as well? So we have to match those calendars. And so if you have a preference for a Saturday instead of Friday, we can probably ask around. But again, we need more than one person saying, I want it on a Saturday, right? I mean, we need at least 30 or 40 people saying that before we can move to another day. Awesome. Let's go on to the next slide, guys. Thank you very much. We've got enough completes. So, but you know, I still want you to give your answers and type it in. So now the upcoming workshop in April, we're going to talk about how to solve UX problems like a rock star. Then in May, we are going to be talking about how to get promoted. So you have to hit next, whoever's running the presentation, right? How to get promoted at a UX job. Okay. And then the last one is techniques to design UX artifacts quickly. Okay. So this is more on the tool level where you're talking about how you're going to manage the different features in the tool to kind of get your artifacts done quickly. But overall, these are the three things that we're going to be looking at. And uh, we look forward to your feedback and your continuous engagement. And if you have any ideas, please do send it to us. Like the whole AI idea was done by members, right? So, I mean, this we, we would never have done something as big as this unless the members came and told us. So again, you know, if you have any ideas, thoughts, you feel any problems at work, do share it with us and we will think about how we can help you solve it. Okay, let's go on to the next slide. Okay, challenge three, okay. For the problem that you have identified, okay, that you have actually used ChatGPT and done all the work, right? Ideate on visually appealing pages, okay, and then submit your screen, okay. Now I'm going to modify this. I would love for you to submit your work on LinkedIn, share the work on LinkedIn, and say this is what we did, and we will share with you additional information on Discord. But you will put all of this on your LinkedIn post and you will talk about, you know, hey, this is what I did, this is how I did it, and this is what makes it valuable, right? I mean, you know, is it worth it or not? That is something you would have to kind of explain as part of your post. Like, hey, I was able to reduce two weeks worth of work in under two hours, or I was able to do X, Y, and Z, or this was the benefit, or this was the not the benefit, right? This is a disadvantage. I would like an assessment of these tools that you have played with over the last two days on your LinkedIn profile with the images that you've generated now as part of challenge three, okay? And we will give you detailed information in your uh, in your WhatsApp group, but best of luck, look forward to seeing your stuff tomorrow, okay? If there's no other questions, we're gonna end the day. Everybody's excited? Excited? Yes. 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 I'm not seeing smiles here. Yes. We Let's turn good. on our cameras, guys. Let's turn on our cameras. We'll take one screenshot quickly so that we are like, let's clap for ourselves because this is a, this has been completely hands-on and I want you guys to kind of start practicing this as part of the work. Thank you. Chalo. Bye. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye everyone. Bye, -bye. Bye everyone. Bye.